God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? Welcome to Divine Insight Ministry. This is Apostle Robert Jenkins. Page, uh, please share this on your page. I'm hoping that um, my phone is not on regular Wi-Fi. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Okay. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We doing part two. Why sorcery is in the house? Part two. Why sorcery is in the house? Uh, part two. I'm going to give you a lot of information today, and so I don't want to take a lot of time uh, in the announcements. I want to move right into the Word, but we thank God for you. Keep us in your prayer. Uh, don't forget today at five o'clock, it will be in my father's house with Prophet James Summers. Please make sure that we go and support him and hear what the Lord is saying through him. Also, tomorrow will be uh, Covenant Couples. Don't miss that tomorrow. And also, tomorrow is my wife's birthday. Make sure you send her some love. Be a blessing to her. Tell her happy birthday. I know you will. This ministry has, has given us so much love. And so we thank God for all you and how you support us in so many ways. And we thank God for your belief in what God is doing in our lives. And so let's get ready. Let's move into prayer. And let's get ready to um, teach on why is sorcery in the church, okay? Good to see you, Sister Owens. Good to see you, Sister Thomas. Good to see everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, Father, we bless you for a wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, that you have woke us, woke us up again by your mercies, by your grace, and because of that, we are thankful. We're thankful. God, I pray, even as I think about that, many people who woke up with sorrow because they have lost a loved one. Lord, let us begin to have a ministry that builds those who go through loss and begin to encourage and that you have given us a word how to deal with these situations when they happen. Thank you, Lord, for our assignment for today. We want to be faithful to it, Lord. So, Lord, help us to be clear on our daily bread. You said when we pray, I give us this day our daily bread. And, Lord, forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us walk in the spirit of love, in the spirit of forgiveness, in the spirit of mercy, in the spirit of grace. Thank you, Lord, for compassion and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and how you're blessing us. We thank you, Lord, for the plan and the, and the prosperity and the provision that you have given to purpose. To every vision, there is provision. You'll never let us be in a place where we're not equipped to be able to sustain that place. So thank you for it. As we lead into this particular lesson, God, you know that this is very sensitive. And sometimes we have we have crossed the boundary when it comes to our ties to earthly things. Help us in the sensitivity as you cut us loose from all forms of bondage and all forms of sorcery. That you bring us into the light. You bring us out of darkness into the light. You understand the ties that we have and sometimes the cries of the flesh that don't understand what you're doing. But just like in circumcision, God, thank you, Lord, for the covenant that requires a blood, a blood cutting. And we thank you, Lord, that you do it and you do it gracefully. Now, Holy Spirit, we are open to hear what you have to say. Teach us. Give us a fresh anointing. We know, God, that you are the original. We don't have to accept anything that doesn't come from you. And we thank you, Lord. So bless us this morning. Wisdom, we're listening. We're sign, sign angels to our mind, north, east, south, and west. Thank you for the gentleman spirit that you came and that you constantly move us in the spirit that you said be wise as a serpent but harmless as a dove and that you said we're loving kindness have we drawn thee. So even in this teaching that has a sharp edge to the sword, but you know that through love we will wake up. And we just bless you for it. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for bringing families together, bringing understanding together, how to work together in unity, bringing your plan and purpose. Touch your people everywhere in the name of Jesus. Don't allow us to do anything without the anointing resting, resting on us and we have favor in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. Let's deal with it. I got a lot I want to say to you. So good morning, good morning. Take heed to all the announcements. If you're just coming on, go ahead and hit that share button. Good to see you, cousin. And please do a watch party if the Lord say the same. And if you can't do that, just invite some people out. Just hit that invite button. Invite about 15 to 20 people out. It take a couple seconds to hit that invite button. If you have never shared this on your page, come on, help us out in the ministry. There are very things that you can give to the ministry. It's not always financial. You can give a share. You can give an invite. You can give a watch party. You can give a lot of things. Okay. 
And so don't forget prayer partners. We're having our first prayer session this Thursday at 6 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. We will call you on messenger. All those who are part of the prayer team, we're having our first prayer meeting this Thursday, okay? At 6 p.m. It would be on messenger. Make sure that you have a messenger. If you've been notified through email that you are part of the priest, I mean part of the uh prayer team be prepared for thursday to get a phone call on messenger so we all can see one another okay god bless you why is sorcery in the house part two i first i want to give a disclaimer this morning for a lot of people who may not understand why are we teaching so much because it's easy to believe that we are attacking the church and when you hear this kind of teaching and you hear this kind of truth that embraces so many things that are wrong in the house of God, uh, in our own personal house, and I try to never attach anything to the institutional side of the church that is not part of the physical church, which is who we are. We are the call out ones. The real name for church is really means the call out ones, okay? And so it is a collective call that God has called us to. And so, but there is a physical church that we go to called the building, okay? Okay? And those structures, even the language of that has to be destroyed because the language of the institutional side of church and the uh, expression of the institutional side of church has a lot of demonic and sorcery trimming to it. And so in order to bring about a correction, we have to be able to address some things. In addressing those things, because a lot of times they are personal, it looks like we are attacking people. And remember, I am very sensitive that we never come uh, uh, leave with that type of mindset. We don't fight against flesh and blood. So you are never my problem. The problem is the spirit behind us that it may be controlling us or influencing us or driving us or oppressing us or repressing us or suppressing us so that you are doing behavior that is outside of sonship. And so that's what we are addressing. I want you to know that we don't fight against flesh and blood. So I don't want you seeing Take this as the attack against church or against your pastor or against your leader. But the church that you may be a part of or even you yourself, your family. I was raised up in family that practices sorcery and witchcraft and all those things. And so do not stay bound because it's close. Do not stay bound because you see yourself in the midst of these teachings. You may see your teacher. You may see your preacher. You may see your apostle. You may see your mother, your father. Do not take this personal to the point that it keeps you bound. You have to know that your freedom to be able to walk in your purpose, your destiny, and, and, and your identity is important to you that if you have to rip away from anything, you are willing to do it. This is why Jesus approached this one of the uh, ways he approached this was you have to hate mother, father, brother, and sisters in order to walk in the kingdom. You have to hate them. Now, he doesn't deal with the word. He's not really dealing with hate because that's negativity, but he's dealing with the passion that you must have. Be willing to leave. And a lot of times when we're addressing this area, it shows you how bound you are by not willing to walk away or even confront God to say, God, I've learned something through the word of God. Let there be confirmation in my spirit that if this is true, give me the power to follow you against all odds. Okay. So I want you to say, I want you to understand that I'm not trying to personally come against your church or your family or any, or anything like that, but I am coming against any type of spirit. Okay. Any type of principality, any type of imagination or thoughts that have exalted themselves against the knowledge of God. The Bible tells us in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, your job is to bring these thoughts into captivity, okay? And so I love you enough as operating in the gift of the apostle. I love you enough. And apostles, one of the strongest thing about apostle is that they establish order, Okay, if you under any apostolic teaching or any apostolic uh, gifting, you should notice that that man or woman of God establishes order, the foundation of God. And so my love for God and my love for God's people cannot allow me to not tell you the truth because I don't want to offend your flesh. If you are under any message and your flesh is not being offended in some form where it is alive, then you are under the wrong teaching. Okay, the problem again with church is that we, it has become too comfortable. And I'll get to that. It's, we're going to be on this for a while, at least maybe a couple months, uh, because sorcery <clears throat> makes your flesh comfortable to concepts that are against God.
Okay, so I want you to know that we are not attacking personally, but we are attacking everything that is tied to the people of God that will not set them free so that they can walk in their purpose and their identity and their destiny that God has has uh, has given them. This is why the word to Moses was, go tell Pharaoh. I'm, I'm been dealing with Pharaoh is a mindset. It is where sorcery operates in leadership, in power, in authority, in abuse. Go tell Pharaoh this mindset, one who thinks he is the son of the sun. He thinks he's, he's arrogant. He, he's, he's egotistical. This mindset, go tell that mindset, let my people go. And there are leaders that God raises up to attack the mindset that has controlled God's people. And usually these people, uh, the devil trying to find some kind of accusation to get them. There are people watching me right now. They, they watching every word that I say because I am coming against a very mindset that has held God's people down for years. Okay. And I had to be licensed by God. I had to be certified by God. It took me time for God to be even to build my character, to release me, to say some things that I'm saying. Okay, but I've been called by God, certified by God, and ordained by God to to release this level of truth so that the people of God can be free. And so this is a message out of love. I love you enough to say you got to take a look at some things. You cannot be subject to these things because you have a destiny. You are valuable. You have significance. So I want you to know that that's a disclaimer. So I'm going to go over a couple of things first, why I am addressing sorcery in the church, okay? Or sorcery in your life or sorcery in your family. And then we'll move on to some other things. We're going to expose a lot of things today, okay? I love you. God bless you. Hit that share button and share this on your page. Point number one for today is why are we talking about sorcery in the church? To restore freedom to God's people. Point number one, to restore freedom to God's people, okay? Now, reason why freedom is so important, uh, truth comes to make you free. You can't even embrace truth until you're free, okay? It is very difficult to embrace truth when you are in bondage, okay? In bondage, because real bondage is eter is is an inside thing, not an outside thing. And so, what truth comes, truth comes to make you free. It comes to make you free. Truth, truth comes to you. Okay. Now, one of the tricks of sorcery is to make you believe that you can embrace truth while you're in bondage. No. Truth will not let you stay in bondage. And so even before you can embrace truth, truth must embrace you. And so what happens is God will release a word that will come and set you free from the bondage that you're in so that you can walk in your freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I'll show you the difference between liberty and, and freedom another time. But you got to know freedom, anytime you see the word D-O-M on a word, it is dominion. It is where the free have dominion. Okay, without truth embracing you, this is why truth is a spoken word of the mind of Christ. Christ is the embodiment of truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so, without embracing Christ, the the Messiah, the mind of Christ, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, not Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus, the mind that is attached to humanity. You must have the mind of Christ in order to walk in your freedom, okay? So you can hear truth, but you can't walk in truth until you embrace what has come to you and then walk out based upon what you heard. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so the first purpose of dealing with sorcery in the church is because we got people sitting in the pews, people in the pulpit, people on the prayer team, whatever case may be, and they are not free. They are not free to be who they're called to be. They're not free to walk in their purpose. They're not free to walk in their assignment. They're not free to be who God called them to be. They're not free to be a husband, to be a man, to be a father, to be a son. And so this truth is coming to set God's people free. This is why I am addressing sorcery, because even if it's not in your church, it can be in your home. Sorcery, you can be controlled. Your mother can operate in the spirit of Jezebel. Your daddy could operate in the spirit of Jezebel. You could be operating in the spirit of Jezebel or spirit of Ahab. And so this truth is to deal with every 
uh, aspects of life, whether it's your job, whether it's your community, whether it's your world, whether it's at the church, at your job, any form of sorcery, any form of bondage, we are bringing this level of truth. That's why I try to speak from every angle that God reveals to me. Uh, and, and, and as a gift of the apostle, God allows me to see things from very different angles. There are at least four angles to see truth at every at every level there are seven levels watch this to every to every uh, or, or, or seven rooms to every floor there are seven floors to every house okay and then there's seven houses to the one kingdom okay I, I, I'm giving you something heavy already okay and so so there are at least four watch this four aspects of truth from every level. There are seven rooms at each level. There are seven levels at every house. And there are seven houses within the one kingdom. What do you mean, okay? So you have seven dispensations, okay? Those are truth. Dispensation means timing. So there's seven layers of truth even in dispensation. Seven dispensations. But also you have seven churches. You have seven candlesticks. That's illumination. Okay, seven churches. Okay, the seven churches make up the one kingdom. So you got to be able to understand. So sorcery can deal with all different type of levels. That's why it's called spiritual wickedness in high places. The word spiritual and the word wicked should not go together. But God tells us we got to be able to fight against. Watch this, and He names the fivefold ministry of the devil. He names rulers and darkness. Okay, principalities and powers. But then He says spiritual wickedness in high places, and so our our job is to address sorcery that may have showed up, watch this, on the east side. You have north, east, south, west. Those are the four aspects of truth at each layer, okay? So, so watch this. So you may you may not see sorcery from the east, but somebody else sees it from the west. Somebody else sees it from the south. Somebody sees it from the north. Four aspects. These are the gathering of winds, different doctrine. This is why one of the reasons why I embrace other people uh, that teach because they may have a more understanding of God from this perspective, from a historical perspective, or from a revelatory perspective, or from exegeting the scripture, uh, or apologetics, or from uh, experience uh, from wisdom, all the different ways to see truth, okay? And so this is very important. So this is point number one. Why are we teaching against sorcery? To restore freedom. And for some people, I'm not restoring freedom. You've been born in it. As, as David said, why did you mess up with Bathsheba, David? I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Many times you were raised up in sorcery and you believe that your way of doing church is God. It's anointed, but you don't know that you've been raised up in it, shaped by it, and never had any other truth come outside of the false truth to believe differently than what you believe. You've been programmed, and many times sorcery is at its best when it has programmed programmed you to believe that it's God. Remember, it's called deception, which means it looked like God, talk like God, walk like God, but it's not God. Okay? Very key. So you got to understand that. When we're born again, we're born free, but even in born free, our minds got to be renewed. Even in renewal, even when you deal with the African-American man who was set free, watch this, his mind was still in bondage. His mind was still in bondage. And so you find out when they set the slaves free, many of them went right back and did not work for free labor, but so close to free labor. This is why we almost accept anything now. This is why somebody can offer you $2 an hour and you will say, I thank God, I praise God for it. Because we've been programmed to settle. We've been programmed not to know our worth. We've been programmed not to know our significance. So we let people tell us what we worth per hour. You only worth $8 an hour. You only worth, this is your wages, I'm going to pay you what I feel you are valuable to this system. Because we've been programmed not to know who we are. And so if I don't know how valuable I am because sorcery makes me take whatever is given to me because I don't know how to have dominion. I don't know how to have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air. See, so because of that, I settle. And so I should be an owner of my own company, but I always volunteer to be a slave to build somebody else because I don't know who I am. I don't understand my identity because I have not been set free to be who God called me to be, to walk in my birthright. I have a spiritual blessing that's tied to me.
Okay? I, I have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But I don't know that I have everything I need. I think I lack. I think I lack this. I lack that. <clears throat> I even think I lack education. I think I lack it. I guess. So, this is why I say I got to get educated. Not knowing what the word education means. I've been programmed to believe this what education, what the real word for education means to induce. Induce means to pull out, not put in. Most of the time we think we, we're always lacking. Somebody got to put something in me. Somebody got to put something in me. No. Who puts women in the fish? Who put barking in the dog? Who put shining in the star? Who put, the, who put a tree in the apple seed? God. So why? <clears throat> Are you made in the image and the likeness of God? <clears throat> Watch this. In the image and the likeness of God, but you have to be added to, but everybody else that serves under you have everything they need within them. It's, it's a trick. It's sorcery. And so there's always, so point number one, to restore freedom to God's people so that they can walk in their freedom, but they can't be free if we do not tell the truth. This is why it is imperative for us to tell the truth, okay? It is imperative, okay? Uh, somebody says they keep cutting out. I gotta check my phone. I hope it didn't switch because sometimes when it's no, on, it's huh? No, it's okay, good. So my wife said hers is good. And so let's try to fix that because this is very important. Just tell them to log off and come back. Okay, just log off and come back. Okay, all right. Okay, and so it's very important that we Embrace that level of truth that comes to us. God, I give it to you, and um, and so that you can walk in walk in the freedom which God has designed for you. Okay. Point number two: Kingdom people must be free to think. Kingdom people must be free to think after being free. Point number two: The reason why I am addressing sorcery in the church. Kingdom people must be free to think after being free. You are not you. Church is not designed for church. Church is designed for the kingdom. Listen to the language of Jesus. He says, who do you say that I am? Peter stands up and Simon stands up and say, thou art the Christ. He didn't say thou art Jesus. He said, thou art the Christ. Watch the son of the living God, the Messiah, right? The minute that he says that, he says, he says, and thou art Peter. The minute that Christ, ha I mean, Peter has a revelation of Christ, God gives him a revelation of himself. Real freedom does not only introduce you to God, but it introduces you to yourself. Anytime you are in a church and they are trying to convince you that you know God better, but you don't know yourself better, is sorcery. It's sorcery. It's a trick. It's a delusion. It's a program. You can never come to know God better and you still don't know who you are. It's false. This is the greatest trick of church is to make you feel like you are a praise and worship leader and you really know God. That you are a preacher, you are a minister and you really know God. But they never set you free to be you. Anytime you meet God at a greater level, you also meeting yourself at a greater level. This is why God gets in you. God gets in you in order for you to find him, you got to look within yourself. God never wants you to think that he's on the outside of you. He's in you. He operates through you as you operate as God through you as you. So when somebody says you really love me, that's God loving them through you as you see. So that's very key. So you know that. So the minute that Peter says, thou art the Christ, Jesus says to him, thou art Peter. You're not a little stone. Watch this. You're not just a little rock. You are a little stone. Petro. Petro. I'm introducing you to yourself. You're not going to meet me. God don't need us to know him and don't know ourselves. He don't want us to be found to him, but lost to yourself. This is a trick. This is a trick. Okay, you got to know yourself and God reveals. So don't tell me you are part of a church that you have grown in God, but you haven't grown in yourself. You still lost to your purpose. You still lost to your idea. God don't need you to know his purpose. God is wonderful. God is great. God is powerful. But then you say who you are. I'm poor. I don't know who I am. I'm, 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 I'
I'm uneducated. I'm a black man struggling. Uh, no. How did you know how powerful God is and don't know how powerful you are? How did you know how strong God is and don't know how strong you are? When you come to know God, he will reveal you. So the minute that he says, thou art the Christ, he says, not only do you know who I am, you are Peter. And when you are not under sorcery, to grow into God is to grow in yourself. It's to grow in what you're called to do. It's to grow in your destiny. It's to grow in your purpose. It's to grow in your power that God has given you. And this is key. And you don't have to try to come to know yourself. The same Christ that reveals who he is will reveal to you who you are. Peter didn't say, I got to, okay, now that I know you, I got to, I got to learn myself. He said, no, I'm going to tell you who I am. When I tell you who I am, I'm going to tell you who I am in you. I'm going to tell you who, who you are. I'm going to tell you the I am of who you are in you. This is who I am. I am strong. I am powerful. Because I, when I say that I am, that's God. And so when I say I am powerful, I am acknowledging God. Watch this. In the I am. This is who I am. See? So I must know that. That's why I wrote the book, 33 Confessions, about the I am of God. Because the I am is in you. Who sent you? I am that I am. See? This is the key. And so what sorcery wants you to believe that you have come in to know God but you don't know yourself. This is not true. Thou art Peter. And upon this revelation, the revelation that you have of me is what I'm building the church on. The purpose of the church was to build up a greater relationship of God so you can have a greater relationship of yourself. Upon this revelation, I'm going to build people. I'm going to build people on the revelation of who I am, the mind of Christ. I shall build the call out one. Now, the minute he say that, now watch this. He says, I'm going to build. God does the building. You know you're not under a program, God, when you're being built. And, and being conformed to the image of his son. If you're not growing up as a, as a son, as a daughter in God, if you remain a slave, but you know God greater, you remain controlled, but you know God better, then that's not God. That's the program they're giving you to make you think it's God. How do you know it's God when you grow up, when you grow into maturity, when you can think for yourself, walk for yourself, teach for yourself, worship for yourself? It's, it's when I don't need Sunday morning because every day is Sunday, when I don't need Bible study because every day is Bible study. So now I don't go to Bible study out of conformity to a system. I go because that's who I am. This is what I do. This is who I am. So now I become the living word, the living epistles every day. This is when you know you're not under a program God. You are under a true and living God because I know who I am. I stand up as Peter. I stand up on the day of Pentecost and I say, I'm not drunk with wine. This is what we're saying. I can prophesy. I can do what God called me to do. I can now say to the man at the gate of beautiful, look on us because I know who I am. Look on us looking to receive something. I can extend my right hand and I can perform miracles. Signs and wonders follow me now because I know who I am. This is when you know you're not under sorcery. But when you are coming to know everything about church, everything about the bishop, everything about the apostle, but you never understand anything about you, it's not that you are living God. Because when you really come and understand God, he will also let you understand you. Because his prayer is that they be one. That they be one. Woo! Okay? That they be one. I pray that they be one. Make them one as we are one. Okay? So point number two. Kingdom people must be free to think after being free. The problem with sorcery is that it is a control mechanism. Even in the church, it is a control mechanism. I see right now I'm not going to get through all this. So it is a control mechanism, okay? And just like slavery, if you study slavery, you'll really understand church. You'll really understand how sorcery, all sorcery did was change uh, change uh, the the material in which we see it. It's just like uh, they say back in the day that they went from the Ku Klux Klan to putting on police uniforms. Well, we went from plantations to church stations. 
It's the same. Sometimes, most of the time, the institutional side, the religious side of church is no different than a plantation. That's why you got masters. See, this is why if you study the old history, especially in the, in the, in the Baptist church, you had to have a letter of recommendation. Where they get that mindset from? Because you have to have a letter to prove that you were free. See? And so you have to have a letter. How do you come? And they say, open the doors of the church. And if she comes by, she comes by experience or she come by letter. And so another pastor had to write a letter to the other slave owner that, that we are releasing this slave to you. She comes by letter. See, so a lot of the concepts that come out of church come out of slavery mentality. Even a lot of the traditions that we come out of. Why do we dress up in church? This is sorcery too. Why, did they, why do you have to wear a suit and tie? Why do you have only big hats and all these things? A lot of the things that come in church come out of a slavery mentality. If you study the old slave masters, what they would do when they let the slave go to church, when they would come to churches, when they finally start having churches in slavery, what they would do they would let that's the time they would dress up they was allowed to wear dresses and suits when they out in the field they had to work like a slave so they had oh so sunday morning they would they oh, oh whenever they had sunday they would put on their dress clothes for sunday now the whole purpose of dressing up the slaves is so that the other slaves would see who dressed the best and they would want to be under your slave master because it was a, it was a deception that i'm not beating the slaves they dressed them up to cover up the marks to cover up what they have abused the people. And so they would dress them up. So when the other slave owners or the other slaves saw you dressed up real nice, they wanted to be under your slave master. See what I'm saying? So this, so dressing up for Sunday mornings was a part of deception to make them think that we are good master. Look how good we do our slaves. Look how nice they look on Sunday. Now I'm going to rape their wives tomorrow night. I'm going to rape their wives tonight. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to abuse the son. I'm going to castrate them. But at least on Sunday, let them pretend to look well, to dress well, as if they are being taken care of, as if they are being loved. This is deception. And we brought that same thing into the house of God. Now, is there something wrong with putting on a suit? Absolutely not. Is there something wrong with dressing up? Absolutely not. Is it okay to put on a dress? Whatever you may wear. But when you are doing it out of a level of control or a level of of deception, when you don't feel good about yourself, when you're not covered in love, when you're not covered in peace, when you're not covered in security from God, when you're not covered, watch this, in a real covering, then dressing up is for what? And most of the time we dress up not because you feel rich on the inside, you feel better about what's on you than what's in you. Uh-oh, but you should feel good about what's in you. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But you feel good when you have on a, a certain pair of shoes or you have on a, a nice suit and it changes. So now you don't feel good because you're made in the image and likeness of God. You don't feel rich because you're rich with faith and love and peace and long suffering. No, you feel good because you were able to put on somebody else's name because you don't know your own name. Your own name don't make, don't give you that much value. Your own name don't give you that much uh, significant. Oh, so you don't want to put on that name. So you want to put on garments and you go through life in living in a deception that you only can feel good by what you put on, but never feeling great about what's already in. See what I'm saying? So this is real talk. And so we got to be able to bring you from a, from a program mind to a mind that thinks, thinks, thinks. See, we got to think, why do we do what we do? Is it a form of sorcery? Is it a form of false covering? Is it a form of false protection? Why do we do what we do? See, because I should be able to bless God regardless of what I come on. I don't need, watch this. Woo! I don't need, I don't need clothes to, to bless me. That's right. That's right. It's insecurity, Pastor Peterson. And we have these insecurities because we don't have, we're not really secure Oh, the old folks would say blessing us insurance, but we need insurance. Insurance is ex is external covering based upon what you had to pay for. Jesus paid for my for my for my assurance, blessing assurance, Jesus is mine, okay, whoa, don't get me to preach it, so point number two, kingdom people, people must be free to think after being free, the, one, the number one thing that they counted on in slavery was that slaves 
are great at working, but do not allow them to think. That's for the whole purpose. A, 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 a slave could work. She could, if you see 12 years of slave, the woman after raping her, she still put out more cotton than anybody else. And she was the leading person in the field. And so slaves are allowed, watch this, to work but not think. And that's what church has become. It's become a place where we have learned how under the Pharaoh mindset, don't take it personal, it's a mindset that attacks leadership that wants to teach you how to work your people but never lead your people to becoming thinking people. So we're not thinking people. This is why we don't read for ourselves. We need a reader. Read! I don't need you to read. I can read. See what I'm saying? All this stuff. So there's so many traditions that we do because we're not a thinking people. If we were a thinking people, and this is why we fought for years and most churches that are a teaching church, they are attacked. They don't grow as fail, uh, as well as we as the other churches that are emotional because most emotional churches, are uh, they're not growing. They have swelled. You know, your, you can, your, your, your arm can get infected. And when it get infected, what happens is it will swell up. Well, your arm is not full of muscle, it's full of pus. And a lot of these big churches, they, there's, there's no real muscle there. There's no real faith there. It's pus. It's swell up. It's infected. Okay? And so, because it has never had real growth. Uh-oh. Real growth. Why? Because it's full of, watch this, slaves that work but do not think. Remember, I don't care how well you can sing, preach, teach, uh, be a deacon, trustee, usher. How well do you think? How well do you understand concepts? Do you know the difference between dogma and doctrine? Do you understand the difference between slavery and servanthood? Can you distinguish the difference between discipline and control? See what I'm saying? And so you got to be able, and, and, and you know you're under sorcery, watch this, when you are not free to think. You're not, this is why a lot of times you can't ask questions on Sunday mornings. Why can't I ask questions at the time when people come the most? Well, sometimes people say, well, it's not made for that. No, we don't make, you don't make Bible study for that. In most of the churches now, Bible study is nothing but another Sunday morning service. And the real reason why a lot of churches are doing Bible study and Friday night has nothing to do with the growth of the people. There is no ministry that's designed to grow you up in the body of Christ. I hate to say it, but a lot of churches, you don't have real ministries. You don't have real ministries or real leadership that really know systematically how to grow us up. You can't grow people up without a criteria. You must have a criteria. You must have a goal and an aim. You must know the subjects that is needed to grow them up in that area. When you go to regular school, they say it takes 12 years to need what you need to be a citizen in the United States. And they have a systematic, there's a reason why there's certain things you learn in kindergarten that you don't learn. What was this? When you're five years old, you're not learning eighth, year, eighth grade uh, information. No. But in church, we are the only people do, do not set people aside according to their purpose, according to what's needed for them. We put everybody together. So we got the kindergartens together with the eighth graders, the eighth graders together with the twelfth graders, the twelfth graders in, 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 in the same class with the PhDs, all this type of stuff because we don't have a curriculum. We're not saying that you need so many years of math, so many years of science, so many years. You have to learn how to read, how to write, how to do a, a mathematics. You got to know Concepts. You got to know how to comprehend, how to break down. You got to know your alphabet. The average Christian, if you ask them, what is the alphabet of the Bible? Do you know your ABCs of the scriptures? Do you know, come on, how many years of faith do you have to have? Do you know the first basic elements of elementary school and God? Most Christians don't know. They can't tell you from a doctrine point of view. Give me three scriptures on justification. Sanctification, holiness. Come on, somebody. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. They can't teach it. So they don't know what they justified about. They don't know what they sanctified about. They don't know what holiness really means from the Bible, not what the church told you. Think, think, think. No, I didn't tell work. Don't work it. Think it, think it. 
Have you ever thought it through? Have you ever studied for yourself? Do you know these principles of faith, justification, and sanctification, the elementary side? Do you understand the stages of sonship, fatherhood? Do you understand servanthood, bride? All of these things are necessary for your growth. So kingdom people must be free to think and religion and sorcery raises you up to be the best workers in the church, but you're not allowed to think. And the minute that you start thinking, the minute you say, why do you say that's a sin? Why are we in a denomination? Why do we have to baptize in this name and hate everybody else who baptize in that name? If you start thinking, if you start saying it don't make sense, if you start saying I don't understand, that's when you get labeled. That's when you get marked. That's when you get kicked out. Oh, you're having a problem. Why are you the only pastor? Don't you ask that question. Why are there not other pastors? Why you get a salary, but the praise and worship leader don't? She do more work than you, pastor. She sang for two hours. Why is she not on payroll? Why is the drummer and the piano player on payroll, but the Sunday school teachers are not on payroll? Why are they not getting paid? These are the kind of questions that you start to ask when you start moving towards freedom. Uh-oh, this going to get you in trouble. Why are we paying a musician $800 a week to play the organ and our rent is $800 a month? Oh, and why are we burdening down the same people? Why are you? See, all these questions will get you in trouble. This is when you start getting a thinker. But in order to be a kingdom, you got to be free to think. How do you recognize sorcery? When you are made to be a great worker, but you are are a troublemaker when you start thinking. Woo! Kingdom people must be free. And you can't start thinking until you get free. Until freedom comes to you. you. This is why God is raising up people outside of your church to say something to you. Because that truth came to you at the grocery store. Somebody asked you a question at your job. And all of a sudden that truth came to you and said you need to get free. You can't answer this question. You need to get free. 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 It'll come to you. And all of a sudden, it is hard to get free when you're sitting under bondage. Because the more, because most people don't want God, they want a good master. Oh, the most people don't want God. They want a good master. Most people don't want to be free from religion. They just want a better church. They just want a better church. That's all. Yeah, yeah, he's not bad. Well, you know, over here, he let us preach. Over here, he let us teach. I still don't know who I am. I still don't know that thou art Peter. I still don't have a revelation of my purpose, but at least I'm working, I'm working in the church. I'm working in the church. I'm not thinking, I'm, but I'm working. I'm not thinking, but I'm working. I'm so glad he let me work. See, you got to get free because when you're sitting under it, the master goodness will rob you. You know how people can be in marriages for 17 years and then they finally get a divorce? And and, and then you say, well how, did, how, well, well, how was the marriage? You said it was terrible the whole 17 years. Well, how did you stay with somebody for 17 years that was terrible? Because of the good master days. For three days, you argued. But the, sec but the fourth day, you went and got some donuts. And then three more days, you argued. And then the next day after that, you took the kids to Disney. And then four more days you argue. And before you know it, 17 years, that one good day, one good event, a couple good hours made you suppress, made you, made you uh, under hypnosis to the reality that your marriage is terrible. Woo! It's the good days of the master. When you look at the slave owners who had their house and I'm not going to call their name, but had the house slaves versus the field slave. The house slave fell in love with the pastor and loved, and loved that, that master based upon his privileges in the house. Well, the same thing is happening in church. This is sorcery that it looks for the people that I'll bring under my leadership. They're still slaves. They're not allowed to think, but they're in the house. And because they work in the house, they feel like they're not, they not slaves. And so as they say, and you heard it, they don't say I'm sick. They say, if the master say he's sick, they say we sick, master. Is we sick? Is we sick? Why is we sick? Pastors, we going on a fast? Pastors, we giving $100? 
Pastor say, I'm going to give $500. You know you don't have $500 to give, but you got to do what the master's doing. So I, I'm going to give $500 too, Pastor, because we sick, because we giving, because we fasting. Uh-oh, we don't like this kind of teaching. I, am I telling you it's wrong to follow your leader? Absolutely not. But is you following your leader as a free thinking person being led by the Holy Ghost or or, or or are you under a form of sorcery that teaches you how to be obedient as a good slave? And do we disguise this as servanthood? Because servanthood and slavery looks alike. And people have lost their lives and lost their husbands and lost their wives under a master teaching because you are never allowed to sit back. And this is why when you finally leave the church or you finally come from out of your family, you come out of your family, Abraham, because this ain't just a church thing. You can be in the witchcraft in your home. Your daddy can be a witchcraft worker. Your mother can be sorcery. Your mother can be Jezebel. And whenever you start coming out of mama's control, daddy's dominant sea. Your, your job can be under it. Thank you for giving. We're sowing where we're going. And so when you start doing these things, guess what? All of a sudden now, your thinking wakes up. Because yes. the minute you get free, you're now free to think. Yes. And you and for two weeks, your mother was out of town and you start thinking about all the stuff that mama made you believe. A lot of women, you lost the good man because you never knew how to think outside of mama's conditioning. Mama has conditioned you to never re think a man is a good man because her dad was a bad, I mean, her husband was a terrible, terrible father to you. So because mama didn't know how to handle a good man, you've been conditioned to not even recognize a good man. You can't even recognize a good woman. This, this not being able to think has made you make bad choices in relationship. Thank you for giving. We're sowing where we're going. But it allows you to make bad relationships, choices. Bad career moves because you've never been able to think. I remember in, in one of my marriages when it was over and, and, and she was gone for, I, I think she had been gone for maybe four or five months at that time. I was single and I looked in my cupboards and I didn't have not one glass in my kitchen that I liked. I looked around the house and I said, what do I like? When you're under sorcery, you don't even know what you like. It's almost like coming to America and when Eddie Murphy going to marry the lady who was under a form of slavery. Well, what do you like? I like what you like. Well, do you like chicken? I like chicken if you like chicken. <laughs> you mean tell me you'll do whatever I say? Whatever you say is what I'll do. Now, it looked like she was a good wife. See? V very key thing. I remember going to the store. And, and, and I said, I'm going to go, I'm going to pick me out some glasses because I want to look in my cupboard. I want to drink out of something that I really like. I didn't even know that I had never taken out the time to think about what Robert Jenkins, James DeVoe wanted. Do you even know what you want? Do you even know what you like? What's your favorite color? Why is it red? Because everybody told you it's red. Do you really like red? I remember growing up in my life and people would ask me, what's your favorite color? And I would say red. And then one day I got free. One day I got free. And I thought about it. I said, do I really like red? I like red because it was bright. Not because I liked it. I had never come to know red. Then I looked in my closet. What nothing in my closet red. I ain't never had a red drum set. I ain't never had nothing red. But I thought I liked red. I didn't even know what I liked because I had been under sorcery that told me we walk according to the course, the course of this world, the prince of the power of the air. I didn't know because I had never been free. Free to think. You can be in a marriage right now and your marriage is like a life sentence because you're not allowed to think in the marriage. You're not allowed to think in the relationship. You can work it, go to work, make that money for her. My husband's a good worker, but can he think? My wife cook every day. Not a day go by she don't cook. She clean, she wash, but is she allowed to think? What happens when she talk to you and she think for the first time? Yes, now you say she's rebellious. She's a Jezebel. Why? Because she thinking? Or because she getting free? 
Because when you get free, the more free you are, the more you think. There are pastors who hate this type of teaching because they can't control me because you can't control a thinker. Ooh, you can't control a thinker. You don't need to control me. If God is leading me, I'm going to be committed. I don't need you to control me to be committed. I don't need you to control me to be loyal. Why you got to control me to get me to be faithful? Faithfulness have to be on the inside of me. Woo! I said, Brother, Pe Brother Peterson, wake up, churches. Kingdom people must be free to think after being free. That's point number two. I had 11 points, and I'm only on point number three, so we, we ain't going to get that far today. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> point number three. To break this psychological control that was given by deception and abuse. I'm only giving the prerequisites so far. Why am I teaching the way I'm teaching? To break the psychological control. We are psychologically controlled. It's hypnosis. The danger about hypnosis in the natural. The danger about hypnosis in the natural. And let me say this as a proclaimer. Anything that I'm saying to you, do not believe me because you love me. Try the spirit by the spirit to see if it's of God. If God, if the spirit that dwells in you. Make sure you have the right spirit. A lot of times you try the spirit by the spirit, but the, both of the spirits are demonic. So they always going to agree on certain people's teaching because your spirit is not right with God. Remember that because there is unity even in darkness. So watch this. But if you have the right spirit, you try everything I'm saying. If it does not agree with your spirit, this is not where you're at right now, then don't take it. Don't make me your new idol. Don't make me a good master. I have to be accountable. I have to be responsible. And I have to, every joint has to supply with me as much. Okay? And so, so what it does is it's going to force you to think. Because if you're not a thinker, you're just making me another good master. Only reason you're liking me because you don't want to study for yourself. Don't enjoy me because I seem to be the better one that can articulate it, that can break it down better. No, you should say, I'm in agreement with God, what God said through Apostle Jenkins, Brother Jenkins, Elder Jenkins, Bishop, whatever you want to call me, is because I talked to God. Okay? Very key. Okay? Very key. And so that way we are agreeing with the same spirit. Okay? Watch this. Point number three, to break the psychological control that is given by deception. One of the greatest ways that sorcery works in the church is by deception. Psychological control. Now remember, go back to my point. Hypnosis in the natural, the way that it works, that the only person can set you free is the one who puts you under control. Now, this is a lot of reasons why people can't walk out of psychological control. Because most of the time, in the natural, it comes from the person that puts you under the spell. There's a movie out. Uh, it's called Now You Can See or Now Can We See You. It's about these four magicians. And they go through and they deceive the whole world. To, and this guy is putting together this team of magic guys. But they have the guy, I think his name is uh, Harrison. I think his name is, um, I forgot. He's a white actor. But he's a, he's a hip, he knows, he knows how to hypnotize people. And so when he's at the airport and he hypnotizes people, he hypnotizes the, the wife. And while she's under hip, hypnosis, he tells the husband, if you don't give me all your money, I'm going to tell her that you've been cheating. And so he's so-called be able to read into their life. But while he's talking to the husband about give me your money, the wife is under the spell. Nobody at the airport can bring her out of the hip, out of the hypnosis because it don't matter who's telling you the truth outside of the hypnosis. You only hear the voice of the one that puts you under the spell. Now I'm going to teach them. I'm exposing witchcraft and sorcery. What happens is it ties you to that voice. And so what he does when he puts you under hypnosis, he uses something to get your total 
That's it, Harrison Ford. Thank you. So he, he uses something to put your total attention. And when your eyes focus, like they may do this, watch my hand, watch my hand, watch my hand, watch my hand, watch my hand. And before you know it, boom, you're in a hypnosis, you're in a trance. Uh-oh. But the Bible talks about trances. Watch this. And you're under a trance. And then when you're under that, the people on the outside can say, hey, hey. They can do whatever. You don't see nothing because you're under hypnosis. This is what goes on a lot of times in churches. You have been hypnotized by a voice. You've been hypnotized by a tone. You've been hypnotized by an image. You've been hypnotized by a tradition. You've been hypnotized by a denomination. You have been hypnotized. And because you've been hypnotized, it don't matter if Apostle Jenkins is teaching some truth, if uh, Pastor Tim is teaching something, if Robert Bailey, our uh, prophet is James Summer, I mean, prophet is prophet James Summer, prophet is Michelle Summer, or uh, Pastor Peterson, it don't matter if Sister Nick Journey, if Sister Tia, it don't matter. Because most of the time, you are so tied to a particular voice that you don't hear nobody outside of your denomination. You don't hear nobody outside of your religion. You don't hear nobody outside of your mama. You don't hear nobody outside of your daddy, outside of your raising. And so even though truth is all around you, uh, you only tied to because you have focused. That's the name of the movie. Thank you, Sister Casey. Now you see me. Yeah, Woody Harrison. That's it. That's the right person. Woody Harrison. So now you see me. Now you see me. And so what happens is you are under this hip hypnotized and even though and while you're being hypnotized the enemy is cutting everything around you robbing you of your money robbing you of your security robbing you of your passion robbing you of your love robbing you of all these things and when you come out of it you never believe you was under hypnosis when she finally comes out of it she said hey what's going on oh this stuff doesn't work oh church doesn't work oh it doesn't work you don't know you've been under hypnosis for 50 15 years of your life, you've been under hypnosis for 17 years of your life because no one else can speak to you but your bishop. No one else can tell you the truth but your pastor. No one else can meet the criteria that your daddy made, that, that your mama made. So nobody like mama, nobody like daddy, nobody like this person. You have been hypnotized. Woo! See? And the whole purpose of me teaching now, God has given us the anointing that breaks the yokes. Hypnotizing is a yoke. And because of the anointing on my life, the anointing destroys the yokes. And so the only reason why many of you are able to walk in freedom, because you sat under somebody for the first time that had the anointing that breaks you from the yokes of tradition, breaks you from the yokes of, 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 of control, breaks you up from the yoke of, of abuse, breaks you from the yoke of being in a soul tie. And without that anointing, Jesus says, I have been anointed to heal the brokenhearted. Why the anointing? Why not love? Because most of the time, it is what you love from the wrong place that has hypnotized you. You fell in love with tradition. You fell in love with your denomination. You fell in love with certain things, and you got hypnotized by it. But when the anointing comes, it breaks the yoke so that the one, because many times, your leader are still hypnotizing people. You are able to see what you see because the anointing sets you free. This is why the enemy don't want you to hear a certain preacher. He don't want you to leave certain buildings and go to another place. Because if you ever mess around with the anointing and your eyes become open for real, back to the spiritual truth, my eyes are open to interpreting scriptures. My eyes is open to this buffoonery that goes on. What do I do with a person that can see? Now you see me. Uh-oh. What do you do with a person that eyes is open to, to traditionalism, that is open to false religion, that is open to, uh-oh, pass down demons? Demons of doctrine control what do you happen. So the purpose that we're teaching is to break the psychological control that is given by deception. Now, my time is already up, so let me talk about these two last words in this point. Given by deception, deception is very, 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 I can't say enough varies. Powerful deception. Most people, when you study the police department, 
and they have to train them to recognize a counterfeit dollar bill. The way they train them to recognize a, a counterfeit dollar bill is that they present a real dollar bill. And they have to study the real dollar bill and know how the real dollar bill is made from the plate, from the texture, from the light, from the coloring, from the hidden codes that are in it, from the hidden lines that are in it. They weigh it, they burn it, how it burns, how it deals with light, how it deals with pressure. They study the real so that they can identify a counterfeit. Most of the time, the reason why we are deceived by sorcery, because very few people have really sat down with God himself and know what real anointing looks like. What do real love looks right? So because you have never studied the real, you cannot study a counterfeit to, to, to recognize a counterfeit. And most of the sorcery now, they are telling you, they are training you to recognize a counterfeit. But they gave you a counterfeit to recognize a counterfeit. You're not recognizing the counterfeit. You're helping them know how powerful their deception is by you believing that you can recognize a counterfeit. What if what was given to you as a pattern to know truth was false from the beginning? What if you have always used the counterfeit? So now you are not identifying counterfeits. You are recruiting counterfeits. And what happens is, is that many of us, you were never trained by God to recognize tradition. This is why the Bible says, you got it right, Brother Michael, we got to study traditions. We got to know it, but we got to know it from studying the Bible. When you study the Bible, I know what's out of order by studying what's in order. As a free man, I can't study it as a slave man because as a slave man, my perception is off. If, as a slave man, I'm already coming with pre conceived notions. I'm already coming with things that I already believe is true. I'm using a plate that's perverted. I remember the first time me and a friend of mine, and I'll just call his name out today. I don't know if he's on. Brother Gilbert Rucker. I remember, thank you, Pastor Peterson. I remember me and him studying on the proper way to give in the house of God. And really, we were studying on paying tithes. Paying tithes was wrestling with us. And so we was wrestling with paying tithes. And so the first thing that God gave me, he said, in order for you to study in on giving, you got to throw away everything that you know. Uh-oh. In order to recognize God and the devil, you got to throw away everything you've been told. I said, God, wait, 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 wait. I got to throw away. I got to throw away everything that I know. So I threw away Malachi 3 and 10. I threw away every scripture in my mind. And I started fresh like I know nothing. The key to knowing truth is to become empty. Man who loses life shall find it. The problem is you trying to find your life. That's why you lose it. I had to give it all up. And we, and we pull out a Strong's Concordance. We looked at the first time tithes was mentioned. And we studied every single verse in the Bible on tithes. And we read the whole chapter, not the verse. The program told me this verse right here supports tithes. I can't go with the program told me. That's hypnosis. I don't know what this verse means because I got rid of it all. I'm not going to start at Malachi 3 and 10. I'm going to start with Malachi chapter 1. And I got to get up to chapter 3. Why did he Why did he mention tithes in the first place? I went back to Abraham and Abraham gave tithes. Why did Abraham give tithes? 
Why was this the first time ties was mentioned? Because in order for me to walk in freedom, I got to get rid of what I was told. If I go in saying, I know ties is right, but I'm going to find a scripture to prove it. What I'm doing, I'm finding something to prove that, that the counterfeit is real. See, see, we use the Bible as a dictionary. We use it to define what we already believe. What we already believe. So I already believe ties is right. So I'm going to show you. Go to Malachi. I'm going to show you that dancing is wrong. Go to Ezekiel. I'm going to show you this. And we find we do the same thing with Christianity that we do to the Muslim. Most people have never studied the Quran. But you tell them the Quran is wrong. But you never studied it. Oh, most people will tell you that the Baptist people is going to hell. But you have never been Baptist. Oh, ba baptizing in Jesus' name is not the right way. But you've never been baptized. In Jesus. You have no study from a free mind. You going in because your mama raised you that way. That was your first Sunday school lesson. That's why you believe it. Not because you really studied it for yourself. You didn't really read it with an open mind. You read it with a mind to prove that what you already believe is true. And so when you try to learn something that support what you already believe, then you already believe it. You just need it. And guess what? If you need a Bible verse to support whatever you want to believe, there is a verse that will support anything. Anything. Anything that you want to believe. If you want to believe it, the Bible verse, you will find something that support it. But you, all you did was study a counterfeit from a counterfeit. You got to start with a fresh plate from God. Oh, there are people who will fight. Woo. There, that's right. That's right, Brother Peterson. Apologetic. But see, a lot of Christians don't even know what apologetic means. They don't understand how to defend the faith. See, theology and apologetics is two different things. Most of we don't know between, between theology, the study of God's word, and apologetics, the defense of God's word. See, we don't understand those type of things. See, th that was foreign to us. As a matter of fact, quit using big words, Pastor Peterson. See, 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 that's what happened. The, the brainwash, I tell you, he up there talking about apologetics. And see, this is what we do. Here's the sorcery. Somebody would say apologetics. You know, we say, all I know is I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. And we're bragging on our way of being, our way of being controlled. We are controlling, watch this, that if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have it. I'm not apologetic. I'm not all those big words. But I got Jesus. Don't know what you're talking about. See, that was your program. That was your program. That was your slavery. You got another slavery that was got slain by apologetics. So you know what? She don't know the ecumenical of the word. The word ecumenical means, and because you don't know the ecumenical of the Bible, and you don't know how to exegete the scriptures, I, I don't believe that God is moving. And you've been programmed by apologetics. We all are under these form of sorcery because nobody got rid of it all coming together in the spirit of love and say, what is God saying to us? Yes, God. Not to me. What is he saying to the body? What is he saying to us? So we go from one form of slavery. We got apologetic slaves. We got ecumenical slaves. We got exegetical slaves. We got Pentecostal slaves. We got an apostolic slave. We got Baptist slaves. We got Pentecostal, Methodist, Catholic, uh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, Trinitarian, all slaves because nobody has really got rid of it all and set under the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, and let him teach you fresh. Woo! Man, I gotta stop. This is called deception. Yes, God. And this is why I'm teaching to break the psychological. I'm not trying to teach you to think like me. I'm teaching you how to think. And I'm telling you to go to the thinker. So the thinker, the Holy Ghost, can show you how to think. If I teach you how to add, it don't matter what number I give you. If I teach you what to add, then you only can add what I gave you. So since I only taught you deliverance, you don't know anything outside of deliverance. So you look for a deliverance church 
because the program of deliverance is the only church you can be a part of because I taught you deliverance. So you will never seek for a teaching church because teaching was not in the program. If I teach you teaching, you will never look for a deliverance church. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Peterson, but I, I, I think I got some. <laughs> but uh, I, I may have to call you. <laughs> Real talk. To break this psychological control that was given by deception and abuse. Now, I don't want to rush this, so I'm going to come back to this tomorrow. Because I want to give you some examples of deception. And I really want to take my time to give you some examples of Okay, I'll give you one example of deception. I'm going to give you a testimonial deception. Okay? This is based upon a true story. I remember being part of a church, and the lady got up in church, and she says, Hallelujah! It was testimony service. She said, Hallelujah, saints! Woo! God is good. Didn't I tell you God was going to give me a car? I told you God was going to give me a car. Ha, ha, ha! I told you God was going to give me a car, right? She go through all this theatrics, right? That's another way of deception. If I jerk when I testify, you think I got the Holy Ghost. That's mm -hmm. called deception. Yeah. See, you don't like this kind of stuff. Here we go. I'm going to show you deception. I'm going to give a dry testimony. Watch this. I just want to thank God that I'm here today, saints, and you know, I was able to come to church this morning. I thank God for my mother, and my mother was able to bring me, and I'm just glad to be here. You see that? Now, if I say that in church, ain't nobody hollering. Ain't nobody going, woo, glory, because I said it in a low tone voice. Mm -hmm. But here's deception. I'm going to do the same testimony. Hallelujah, saints. Thank God I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, running with fire. And I thank God that my mother brought me to church today. I can't wait to see. What are you? I don't know what you come to do, but I come to give him praise. Now, what if none of that is real? I just know what to say. I know how to change my voice. I'll be hyper. We love hype. Ooh. Mm -hmm. and you know what? Somebody gonna holler. Yes, my brother. Let him, let him use you. Come on. Come on, brother. Say it. Say it. Here we go. Here we go. All this kind of stuff. Now, is that wrong? All depends on where your heart is. Ooh. Was it real? Was it real or was it emotionalism? Was you taught to say, even when you come to church, and you say, I give it unto God who's ahead of my life. Did God tell you that? Or did tradition teach you that? Why everywhere we go in every church, you have to say, give it unto God who's ahead of my life. What if the, this is, let me show you what a real testimony is. You know what, y'all? I didn't even want to come to this church. I can't stand this church. But you know what? Sister Jones got a fine husband. And, and I hope that their marriage don't work. Because I've been looking at him and he's looking at me. But you know what? I'm here. I smoked a joint. I'm a little high. But you know what? I came. Praise God, y'all. That's it. Now, what if y'all like that kind of testimony? That's a testimony right there. Jeez, we'll, we don't get them kind of testimonies. See? Real talk. See? This is deception. Emotionalism, how you jerk. Thank you. Uh, you can't even say Jesus without the jerk gotta be in the middle. You gotta time it right. Thank, see, you, you gotta time it. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't time yours right. You ain't sanctified. You're not apostolic. Apostolic know how to do. Thank you, Jesus. See? All that can be a form of sorcery. You may not even know how to bless God from your emotional state and it be pure. Because most of the time, tradition has stolen our emotions have stolen our emotional. It is not wrong to be emotional, but it needs to come from a pure place. See, deception. Here's my testimony. Give an example and I'm done. This lady, she came to church. She said, saints, I told you I was going to get a car. You know what? And, and I heard the word. The word said, walk around the car three times, name it, claim it. And I went to that car lot. And, I, and, she, and she goes into a hooping voice. You can always tell. Because in the middle of their testimony, they're preaching. That's another thing. Here, here we go. So in the middle, in the middle of their testimony, she started preaching. And I walked around that car. And as I walked around that car, I began to walk one time for the Father. She's supposed to be testifying now. She ain't even preaching. I'm walking around the car one time for the Father. One time for the Son. <laughs> Three times for the Holy Ghost. You know, when she gets to the Holy Ghost, she got to start crying. <laughs> ah, thank you. And before you know it, says, that car is outside in the parking lot. All you got to do, all you got to do is believe God. She'd go through all that stuff, right? 
Come to find out that she got bad credit and she didn't get the car. Her grandmother co-signed for her to get the car. She don't bring up the grandmother's name. True story. She don't bring up how her credit was terrible, that she's not faithful with the money she have. She's not, she's not telling none of that. But she wants the people to believe that all you got to do is go down to the car lot, walk around three times, and that car is yours. That is not the truth. That is deception. It's deception. And we use deception as a testimony. Now you got other people who really need a car, who really want God to bless them. He ain't going down to the car lot. The car dealership is saying, what is all these people walk around cars for? You done got oil. You done anointed somebody's car. The, the, the leather is, is juicy from oil because you believe that's all you got to do. You don't have to be faithful. You don't have to be loyal. You don't have to be a, a, a steward. But all you got to do is walk around and one time for the father, see? See? Now, when you really want to teach a biblical principle on name it and claim it, it's already been abused by, by sorcery. <coughs> this is why I'm teaching. To break the psychological. If that woman of God, if you told her that wasn't God, she'll punch you in the eye. Psychological control that was given by deception and abuse. Father, we thank you for this word this morning. Thank you for clarity, Lord. Allow it to simmer. You said to meditate day and night. Lord, we want to give time for them to meditate on it. We don't want them to be under sorcery that they hear, 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 and have itching ears to hear, but never manifest. You said don't be hearers only, but doers of your holy word. So allow this word to be planted like a tree by the rivers of water that they'll be able to have fruit and in due time. They leaf shall not wither because they have received the truth. But even before we can be planted by the rivers of living water, we got to walk down the counsel of the ungodly, no stand in the way of sinners, no sitting in the seat of the scornful, but meditate day and night. We have been guilty of things because we have not gurgitated your word. We thank you for freedom today. Freedom to walk in the truth that you have embraced us with. That we don't just know it, but we do it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I love you. God bless you. Take heed to all the announcements. Don't forget tonight at 5 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, Prophet James Summers will be on will be on. Make sure that we hear him and support him. Also, don't forget uh, the cruise. 2000, Pastor Tim, I got to call you, man. I want you to preach uh, for our revival. So I'm going to call you. All the I got 24 ministers I'm going to call you, people that I believe is tied to this ministry. And so I'm going to call you. We're doing a revival. Uh, I think I'm going to make it April 1st. April 1st is the attentive date for the revival. Okay, and so all those I'll be notifying you. It's about 24 different people I'm going to be calling that comes on this page. I want you to preach for us. Uh, we're doing a 24 hour revival, 24 hours that you'll be able to find a word from the Lord, April 1st. Okay, so I'll be calling you. But take heed to the announcements for the cruise. 2021 will be on the cruise, a Caribbean cruise, okay? We are, we're cruising on the word, walking on the water, walking on the word, okay? Uh, we're dealing with dominion. Walking in dominion, okay? And so please don't forget that. Don't forget that. 2021, Sister Amanda Pearson, contact her. Set up your arrangements. Don't wait to the last minute, okay? Because we're going to run out of cabins. I just believe we're going to run out of cabins. So get yours now. You don't want to miss that. Covenant couples will be there. Me and my wife will be there together. And so don't forget that. Also, April 17th through 20th. If you are in the Ohio area, Youngstown, Cleveland, Ward, uh, you can even come from Buffalo. <laughs> uh, any close to the Ohio area, I'm going to be at uh, my father in the ministry, Apostle Michael Scott. I'll be at his church Friday night, Saturday uh, uh, afternoon, I believe it is, and then Sunday twice. Don't miss that. April 17th through the 20th, okay? Also, we set up some dates. We're going to be, I think, in Florida in October. I don't have the clear dates yet. We'll be doing that. So the calendar is picking up, okay? And we're going to... So, Please take heed to the to the uh, cruise. Call Sister Amanda. Put your money down. Do that. Ohio. Uh, don't forget that. Uh, also, prayer partners, I'll see you. There's the line right there. Hope Conference. 
uh, on the sea at gmail.com. That's H O P Hop Conference on the sea at gmail.com for cruise information. Please contact us at Amanda Pearson, okay? And also, prayer partners, I'll, I'll see you Wednesday at 6 o'clock. We'll be on Messenger so we can see one another and have interaction. <clears throat> okay, don't forget that. Uh, also, tomorrow is a very, 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 very special day, very special day for Divine Insight Ministry. The mother of this ministry, my wife, uh, my best friend, birthday will be tomorrow. So we're going to take our time to really bless her tomorrow and really be a blessing to her. If you would like um, her cash app, information, please inbox us and we'll give that to you. So if you want to be a blessing to her tomorrow, you can do that on her birthday. I honor my wife and I think that's very important that we have to begin to respect the wife. It's a sad thing when the pastor got more respect for everybody else but the, but his own wife. And so that's very important. And so help me in, in wishing her a happy birthday and being a blessing to her. Son, we're going to get her cash app so we can do that tomorrow. So people who may want to be a blessing to her can do that. And also, uh, I talked to her. She says, okay, we're going to do coveted couples coveted couples tomorrow. So we'll do that on her birthday, okay? Maybe we'll talk about, we'll, we'll come up with something <laughs> for her birthday. But I love you. God bless you. And tomorrow we're going to do part three of why sorcery is in the house. I'm telling you, don't miss this word. Get it out. Tell the people. Get it out. Get it out. Tell them. If you, want, if you think there's any form of sorcery in your life, in your marriage, in your home, in your church, Come here a word. And if you agree with your spirit, take it and walk with it. All right? I love you. God bless you. Sister Nick Journey will be on soon. Let's support her. Sister Tia, I got to call you. Got some things I want you to do. And uh, let's get ready. I love you. God bless you. And we'll see you tonight at 5 o'clock. And then we'll see you tomorrow on Wednesday. Happy birthday, First Lady. All right? We'll see you tomorrow. Okay? God bless you. Walk in God's favor.